I work in the Leadership, Learning and Innovation Unit of the World Bank, formerly the World Bank Institute. Um, and we have a program that's called Collaborative Leadership for Development, or CL4D for short. Um, it's a program that's been uh, in the making for a few years and it's uh, basically been designed in response to the um, increasingly complex challenges that our uh, client governments are having to face as well as to the changing way that the World Bank now engages with its clients. Um, so it was uh, initially, I mean for several years the World Bank has had a very sort of rigid approach to lending and uh, the bl blueprint was laid out for five years ahead. The clients kind of had to stick to it. It was very difficult to adjust as we went along. That was not so bad for uh, very technical projects, like if you had a road building project, but it was more, um, it was less useful in the context of complex reform projects like civil service reform. And so in recent years, the bank has shifted towards developing more flexible lending instruments, um, which uh, initial feedback suggests the clients are finding this very helpful, but it also increases the, the is more demanding on their capacity to find their own way through the reform path than, than previously. And so the bank in response to this has tried to adjust from a more supervision mindset, I think Lant mentioned earlier, the supervision missions to um, where they just went and checked in on progress towards the implementation support uh, missions where we actually try to help the clients with their toughest, the toughest part of the project which is the implementation itself. And so CL4D, the program that we've been working on is uh, one way in, we, in which we provide this implementation support. I think it's a lot aligned with the PDIA approach that you guys are working on here. Um, in essence, there we have three key principles. One is to build strong coalitions that can drive and lead reforms and problem solve along the way. Um, the second is to support a process of government uh, learning by doing within the teams and uh, that enables them to adjust as they go along and adapt. And the third is um, to uh, help clients, to facilitate a process that helps clients to resolve their own problems and address their own specific challenges. And so I'm going to just talk about one example we, we were working on in Sierra Leone as a civil service reform. Uh, Vivek over here was the test team lead to start with. Um, we, uh, this is something that's been in gradual decline in Sierra Leone for several decades. Uh, the, the government decided just a few years ago to try and address this. Um, worked with the World Bank on one part of that and they tried to adjust pay skills to introduce performance management of civil servants. Um, to um, fill recruit positions in the middle management level that had been vacant. And uh, basically the World Bank and the government both knew that this was going to require a very strong collaborative effort across multiple agencies of the government to make this a success. Yet historically this was something that the government had not, had not been very good in managing their coordination and communication between agencies. So that was one challenge. Uh, the other challenge was that the project had been designed with the leadership team of the project uh, in the government, whereas now moving into implementation, it's the actual middle managers and their teams that would be doing the implementation. Um, so what did we do? Uh, we have a various uh, collection of tools in our toolbox that makes up this CL4D program. But the client chose to start with some rapid results initiatives and we are fortunate to have Nadim in the room who is the creator of this uh, in the Rapid Results Institute. Um, so these are 100 day sort of mini projects in inside of the larger project and they allow for, um, they allow the clients to get jump started on the project, they show some quick results and they provide a quick, uh, very fast feedback loop for learning. So we began with um, a training with um, the middle managers and their teams and we moved quickly into the um, action planning, sort of work planning and team building. And at the beginning the most important part was to build a sense of ownership within the, the middle managers and their staff um, of the goals and where they fit into the bigger project. And um, what does it mean for them when they show up to work every day? How can we make this practical for them? Um, so we, we did that, we recruited a coach in Sierra Leone, um, also in partnership with the Rapid Results Institute. We have some certified coaches there um, who coach the teams through the first 100 days, um, sort of learning along the way, and then we held a review session. We've done multiple cycles of these Rapid Results now that we're in the third year. And um, 
Yeah, so the review sessions, they talk about what it is that they achieved, the problems they faced, how they overcame some of them, um, and then the challenges that are, are still outstanding. Um, and that's uh, the, ma the middle management level. At the leadership team level, we uh, through it, periodically throughout the project, we've facilitated uh, the leadership team dialogues to um, review the progress that the teams have achieved, to facilitate dialogue with the bank on uh, where we are in the project, if there's a need for adjustment on some of the indicators, if some of the disbursements might be delayed. Um, and it, it just uh, provides a space for them to problem solve and keep moving forward. Um, so some of the politics we had to work with. Uh, in the first year of implementation, there were national elections, and we knew that several of the leaders of the key agencies that we were working with were going to transition out. And so we had um, a review session where we documented all the results that had been achieved, the approach that we'd been using, and the feedback from the leaders as to whether this was working or not. And so to, in, to minimize the disruption to the actual implementation, we then, once the new leaders were appointed, we held another session and talked them through, it was kind of an onboarding session, talked them through what had been happening and got their agreement to continue as, as had been done before. There are, that's something that worked, uh, that we were able to help on, but something that there are other politics that are very deeply entrenched. Um, and I'm happy to talk more about a couple of examples, one of which is very complex, I <laughs> can't fit it in eight minutes. Um, but I talk, can talk about that more later. Um, how did we ensure learning? Uh, there was learning at various levels. One was the coach was capturing the learning within the teams on a, on a weekly basis. Um, then we had learning with the teams across the teams um, in these review sessions. And then, as Matt mentioned, I just uh, have done a write-up of this experience for the past two and a half years to share with people like yourselves and bank staff and other governments thinking about potentially using um, such an approach that we're working on in CL4D.